hallelujah good evening everyone this is the prophet of god prophet john bright Fiafume, reaching out to you from pando precisely once again i am with you here that's been a long time uh we come online um uh, just because of one and two reasons but this evening by the special grace of the lord we have resumed once again May the Lord bless you and keep you, preserve you, even as you are about to watch and you are watching, and even as you are sharing the blind broadcast. Be a savior to somebody through this live broadcast. Connect somebody and let somebody connect somebody, because God is about to do something new in our life. Hallelujah, somebody. This evening, we are going to pray. Hallelujah, I love prayer. Because prayer is a key that opens doors. A man that cannot pray cannot navigate through this end time. Because we live in a time that is full of crises and challenges. And then the only way to navigate through is to be a man of prayer. If there is a man to pray, there is God to answer. So join me this evening so we could pray. Hallelujah. The enemy is messing up with the children of God for quite long now. And we kept quiet. That is why he still has space to do what he is doing. But this evening, as you join your faith with me, we will pray and put the enemy where he belongs. Hallelujah. So I want to use this opportunity to salute the generals of the gospel. My papa, Apostle Kweku Apiaje, a man who God is using these days, performing wonderful miracles all around. I salute you, sir. And my close and tight brother, uh, Prophet Samson Wohini. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Prince of peace, King of glory. The I am that I am, the eternal rock of ages. We celebrate you for how far you have brought us. Daddy, the beginning of the year till now, it wasn't easy. But you have been faithful to us. You've protected us, provided for us, and even you do more than what we can imagine, we bless your name for it. Father, this evening, we are, we, are, we are here to dine on your table. We pray that your spirit will enable us. And every blessing that belongs to us, Father, we are here this evening to take possession of it. So help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Apostle Francis, God bless you so much. You are watching. May the Lord enlarge you, prosper you. Hallelujah. Share the love brokers. Invite somebody. Let somebody invite somebody. Hallelujah. This evening, I want us to pray a prayer. And I want us to study something from the word of the Lord. And I title it, I must recover my losses. <laughs> I must recover my losses. I must recover my losses. Child of God, believe it or no, there is something you need to recover. Anything that is happening in your life that is not originated from God is an error. And every error must be addressed. Anything that the Lord God has not added to your life, but you have been experiencing it, or you are experiencing it, must be addressed. So everybody in this life has something to recover. And before you can recover anything, you must first identify what you have lost. 
before you could recover anything, you must first know and realize what you have lost. Without knowing what you have lost, you cannot recover it. And child of God, since the days of creation till this time, God has given us the mandate. He has given us the power. He has given us the authority to recover every losses that we have lost. So if you are a child of God and the enemy is messing up with your life and you keep quiet, thinking that it shall be well, I want to tell you that nothing shall be well if you don't make it well. If Satan is messing up with your life, the love of your loved one, your marriage, your finance, and all you could say is it is well, or it shall be well, and you are looking for motivational speakers to motivate you, they'll motivate you into failure, they'll motivate you into destruction, they'll motivate you into tears, because the only language the enemy understands is force. Without force, the enemy has nothing to offer, has nothing to release. That's what the Bible says, since the days of John the Baptist until now, until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and only the violence are taken by force. My son James, Apostle James, you are welcome to the live broadcast. Suffer Ephraim. May the Lord bless you all. Hallelujah. Since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violence are taken by force. So in this life, we must understand that there are certain things until we place a demand. Until we place a demand, there is, there is not going, it is not going to be. Hallelujah. So this moment, I want us to share the word of God and also to pray. So open your Bible if you have one. If it, if it belong to you, open it. <laughs> I don't know what you have lost, but there must be a recovery. You have to recover everything that belongs to you. The enemy has no chance. He has no authority. He has no audacity to lay hands on what that belongs to you. Because Bible let me understand that what things soever that man has is from above. And so therefore is the God that you serve is the one behind you. The word from the devil, word from the enemy. Hallelujah. So let's say something from the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings. I love the word of God. Chapter number 6 verse 1 to 6. And it came to pass when the Lord would Second Kings, chapter number 6. And the son of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down the wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. The axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master. For it was borrowed. For it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick. And cast it in Titan. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it out to thee. And he put, it, he put out his hand and took it. Hallelujah. Whatever you have lost must be recovered today. Amen. The Bible said it came to the pass that 
the sons of the prophet, the sons of Elisha, the prophet, the young prophet, who were with him, who he was mentoring, they said to him, man of God, where we are, the space is too small. So it is good for us to go and cut woods, beam, so that we could build house for you. And he said to them, you are at liberty to go. But when they were going, they did not go alone. They pleaded with their father. They pleaded with their father, their pastor, that he should go with them. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. So when they pleaded with him, he went with them. He went with them. What are they going to do? On which mission are they going? Their mission was to go and cut three. Their mission was to go and cut wood so that they could build a house for their master. Because where they were living was too small. Where they were staying was too small to contain them. So one came with the idea that we have to do something about the space here. And the only thing we could do is to go and cut woods and build a, a, a bigger house for us and for our master. But when they were going, one was spiritually grown enough. One was spiritually minded. And he said, no, we cannot go alone. We, we, are we going alone might not be appropriate. So they beckoned on their master to follow them. So the master followed them. He followed them. And the Bible said when they were cutting down the wood, mm, the wood they were cutting down for the building, when they were cutting down the wood, something happened. Something happened in the process of cutting the wood. Bible said the axe head fell into the water. The axe head fell into the water. What was that axe head? What is that axe head? Why is it that it is only the axe head that should fall into the water? Why is the enemy so interested in the axe head? Why not the catalysis? Why not the people? Why not even the wood? But the enemy was interested in the axe head. So when they were cutting down the wood, the Bible said the axe head fell into the water. It fell into the water. And the, and the prophet cried and said, man of God, something had happened. He said, the axe head has fallen into the water. And the most annoying part, the most sad part of it all is that he has borrowed it. He said, Master, the axe head that has fallen into the water was not for me. It was a borrowed axe head. It was a borrowed axe head. Let me tell you, child of God, spirituality it's not only tied to how much you can speak in tongues. Spirituality is not only tied to how much you can sing good song. Spirituality goes beyond that. And one of the, the instruments is that you need eye, divine insight. The Bible let me understand that when men shall shout there is a casting down we shall say there is a lifting up that is why even as you are watching me right now by the prophetic decree and anointing upon my head I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that you are God is lifting you you are, you are receiving your lifting in the name of Jesus share the light broadcast 
Share the live broadcast. God will bless you for that. He said the axe head was borrowed. He said, man of God, we have borrowed it. Why is it that the same time that they went out to fetch wood so that they could build a house was the same time and the same day the axe head should fail? Which means the enemy is interested in the axe head. Man child of God, when Moses met God, when God met Moses in the wilderness, after he has manifested himself to him and called his name to him, that I am that I am, and sent him to go and deliver his people, Apostle Francis, God bless you. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Moses asked God for a miracle. Moses asked God for a miracle. And the only thing God could, could ask him is, what hold it down? What hold it down? You are a child of God. You are believing God for miracle. You are believing God for a turnaround. You are believing God for a breakthrough. You are believing God for science and wonders in your ministry, in your life, in your marriage. You are believing God for something. My question this evening is, you believe in God. What do you have? You must always have something for God to manifest himself through it. You must always possess something for God to stand on it and perform that miracle in your life. That is exactly what the enemy is interested in of. Mm. Am I talking to somebody? That is exactly what the enemy is interested of. The enemy is interested in what you are holding. Because the enemy know that with you holding something, everything is possible. With you holding something in your hand, anything can happen. That is why the enemy is interested in that which you are holding. The enemy was not interested in their life. If the enemy was interested in their life, he could have pushed them into the water. If the enemy was interested in their life, he could have pushed them into the water. But the enemy was not interested in their life. Rather, the enemy was interested in the tool that they hold for that miracle to happen. The enemy was interested in that which they hold to bring the fulfillment into their life. So when they were cutting down the tree, nobody fell into the water. Even the woods they were cutting, none fell into the water. But the tool they were using to cut down the tree is what the enemy cast into the water. I don't know what the enemy has taken from you forcefully. But the Bible said, even the lawful captive shall be delivered and the priest shall be taken away from the terrible. The Lord said, I will contain with him that contain with him. The enemy is interested in that which you are, you are, you are holding. That thing may be your marriage. That thing could be your career. It could be your destiny. It could be your academic. It could be your finance. It could be your application. It could be your self-power and self-awareness. That thing could be your office. It could be the life of your children. It could be the life of your loved ones. The enemy is interested in that which you are holding. Because he understood, he knows that with what you are holding, with that, you are free to go, you are good to go. And you can turn every situation around. So when they were filling down the tree, when they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. But let me shock you. The axe head fell. Who were those people fell, falling the tree or cutting down the tree? Who were those people cutting down the tree? They were not an ordinary man. These people that were cutting the tree, they were not just an ordinary man.
they were prophet and senior prophet in as much as Elisha is concerned the Holy Spirit was present there am I talking to somebody the Bible said they told their father to follow them to the, to the bush so Elisha their father followed them to the bush while they were cutting the wood he was there looking at them he was there monitoring them but lo and behold his presence alone couldn't withheld the enemy from executing his plan his presence alone couldn't stop the enemy from dragging the earth head into the water am i talking to somebody so after the earth head fell into the water the one the prophet who holds it came to the man of god and said to him man of god my father the earth that we are using to fall to cut the tree has fallen mm. and he continued to say i borrowed it this is a great error and this error will be tackled tonight it is a great error it is a great error it is an intensive error it is not appropriate child of god that you the one supposed to provide answer to people you are rather going to people to those same people for an answer you the one that's supposed to be a source of hope for others you have now become a liability you have now become a, a liability to others this is an error and the bible said he said i have seen something under the sun which is an error proceeded from the ruler he said i saw the prince and the princess walking barefooted and slaves and servants are running at the back of horses and he said it is an error and every error must be corrected share the light broadcast minister seven god bless you minister seven god bless you elwen nam sapon God bless you, you are watching, share the, share the live broadcast. Because something is about to change in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We don't speak as we ought to speak. But we speak as Holy Spirit authorizes us to speak. Hallelujah, somebody. So when they were cutting down the wood, they asked and said, and they cried and said to him, Master, ours, the axe head was borrowed. If there be any error in your life, if there be any mistake in your life, I don't know the contention in your life. I don't know what you are battling in your life. But one thing that I believe will serve a living God that has the power to speak to the winds. We serve a living God that has the power to rebuke the storm. So I don't know the challenges you are confronting. I don't know the battle you are fighting. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, every destiny you are born to fulfill, Satan is a liar to abort it. It can never be aborted by the supremacy of the Holy Ghost and the reason of the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare it aborted in the name of Jesus. And he went to his master and said, It has been borrowed. Error. Error. Child of God. It's an error. How could a man who prophesied and rain fell, he prophesied and heaven stopped raining for so many years, a man who called fire, a man who took the cloak of his father and came to River Jordan and said, where is the God of my father? And he smoted the water and the water parted. A man who was passing by and a woman constrained him to come and abode with him and created a space for him and after a while he said to the barren woman a woman who has lost hope and said because you have been good to me a year by this time when I shall be passing by that problem that you have that issue that you have shall be no more but you shall have a child the same man was a man who don't have money to afford as head. Elisha who prophesied to others. 
Elijah who revived life. In fact, when the, the woman, the child died, when the Shunammite woman child died, the child that he prophesied and he came to motion. After the while, the child died. The same Elisha went and lay on the child and breathed on him. And the child came back, the boy came back to life. That was the same man who went and sent his boys to go and borrow Ant's head. What an error is a disgrace. You carry oil to solve people's problem, but you yourself, you can't solve yours. What you are anointed to solve, what you are anointed to solve, is your own problem. You have the problem with that, yet you are solving others. You are solving a similar situation. What a disgrace. What an error. This evening, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what the enemy has taken from you. I don't know what the enemy has cast into the water. In the name of Jesus, there will be a restoration. As you type Amen, your restoration is coming. As you type Amen, your restoration is coming. Whatever you might have lost in this life, whatever the enemy might have taken away forcefully from you, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy restoration. And when you continue the reading, the Bible says, He said to the Master, It was bold. I borrowed it. It is an error for a child of God to be living a borrowing life. You that supposed to lend to nation, you that supposed to be the head but not the tail, you are now borrowing from people, and you are the one supposed to be a central bank, a central bank. That will be giving out to people, and you yourself have become a victim of borrowing from people. Mary Noble, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. I don't know, but God will meet your expectation. Hallelujah, somebody! Hallelujah, somebody! You are destined to be problem solver, and your life is full of problems. Maluka Tobara, it is an error. And when he cried to the master, the master asked him, the master asked him, where falleth it? And he said, it is falling here right now. And he went and took a tree, a stick, and cast it on the water. And when the tree began to sink, hey, <laughs> there was a mystery here. But as soon as Elisha cast the tree, into the water instead of the tree to float mm. instead of the tree to float ha, the tree began to sink and the moment the tree began to sink the moment the wood the stick that Elijah Elijah placed on the water began to sink the asgard began to float the moment the tree began to began to sink the asgard began to float in the name of Jesus something must go down tonight ha, for that glory to be recovered. Something must go down tonight eh, for you to recover your lost glory, for you to recover your lost blessings. I don't know what the enemy thinks eh, he has taken from you and has hidden it in a secret places. Eh, but wherever it is hidden, eh, wherever it is kept, eh, the Spirit of God will invade your privacy tonight. Eh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, eh, the enemy has trusted eh, in his strength and his cunning way. But one thing the enemy didn't know is that Jesus is the master of the game. I don't know what game the enemy is playing with you, but I want to give you this assurance that any time you see the enemy playing a game, you must understand and realize it that Jesus is the master of all game. You don't play with him and prevail. You don't play with him and prevail. That is why he's the master, the mighty man in the battlefield. Hallelujah, somebody. Who are you going with? Who do you go with? You say you are a believer, you are a child of God. 
who do you go with? These children, these people, this young prophet would have been disadvantaged if they did not go with their master. Who you follow determines who follow, what follows you. I said, who you followed will determine what follows you. Who are you going with? Do you go alone? Do you fight this battle alone? Are you searching for your losses alone? No, sir. Restoration doesn't come to that. Restoration go beyond that. Who do you go with? If the ass get fell and the master was not there to perform some mysteries to restore the ass head, what would have happened to that prophet? Because even in the first place, the ass head did not belong to him. He borrowed it. Child of God, I submit this fact to you that when you go with Christ, I said when you go with Christ, Elisha was a type, a type of Christ. He was a prototype of Christ. That is why he was not among the major prophet. Neither was he among the, the, the minor prophet because they are prototypes. Who do you go with? Who are you working with? The prophets were going. Even though they borrowed the ass head and the enemy succeeded in taking the ass head and casting it into the deepest part of the water. But the good news, but the good news was that they were not alone. They were not alone. They went with somebody. They went with the master. The master planner. The one who know it, how and when to deal with our cases, they went with him. So the moment the asked fell into the water, they called for his attention and they said, Man of God, something had happened. Something had happened. Share the light broadcast. Share the light broadcast. Because the Spirit of God is reaching out to you now. In the name of Jesus, you can't be a savior to somebody and you will not be saved. If you can't be a help to somebody and you will not be helped, send a broker to somebody. God will bless you. God will maximize you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Tonight we are going to pray. Something must go down for you to rise. The Bible says, when the, water, when the wood was cast into the water, the earth head began to float. The earth head began to float. Kabarosa, the earth head began to float. I see your marriage floating back. I see your finance floating back. I see your destiny floating back. That job the enemy has taken from you forcefully is floating back. That marriage the enemy has taken from you forcefully is, is floating back. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that company the enemy has taken away from you forcefully is, is, is floating back. I don't know what has sink you down. I don't know what has caused you these losses. But whatever they are, whatever it is, they will sink for your blessing to float. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will sink for your blessing to float. In the name of Jesus Christ, your business will not sink forever. I see some businesses floating right now. I see some managing being restored right now. I see some destiny being restored right now. By the supreme power of the Holy Spirit. What shall we say then unto this thing? If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? One thing we must understand is God is with us. It doesn't matter the, the size of the storm and the intensity of the situation. One thing we must not forget, you are not alone. Hallelujah, someone. You are not alone. I don't know where they have cast your children, your babies. But as you are hearing the sound of my voice tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus, by the reason of the word of the prophetic, there is a restoration coming to you. I thought there's a restoration coming to you. I see your restoration coming. Your children are being released. Your family are being released. Your destiny is being released. Your marriage is being released. Your finance is being released. 
Your job is being released. Your career is being released. In the name of Jesus, you are believing God for any miracle. I prophesy as a man of God. I decree as a prophet of God. That thing you are believing God for is manifesting in hurry. It's manifesting in hurry. It's manifesting in hurry. Some trust them in the chariot and all that trust them in the horses. But we shall remember the name of our God. For the name of our God is a strong tower. The righteous run unto him and they are safe. You can never be destroyed. The enemy is just messing up around. His time is up. His time is up. Type, 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 type it. Enemy, your time is up. My enemies, your time is up. It is a prophetic decree. It is a prophetic direction. As you type it in the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy is messing up in your life will be restored. Hallelujah. It will be restored. Invite somebody. Please. Invite somebody. This is not a means to make money. This means to reach out to the people. The enemy is messing up with us. And it's the high time we stand our ground and say to the enemy, eyeball to eyeball, it is enough. It is enough. First Samuel, first Samuel chapter number 30. God is restoring somebody. God is restoring somebody. God is restoring somebody. In the name of Jesus. First Samuel chapter number 13. And it came to pass when the David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third, third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives, and their sons, and their daughters were taken captive. Then David, the, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Mm. It is not time to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Aginwam, the Jezreelite and the Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Canaanite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke to stone in him, because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. This is where I love most. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hallelujah. And David said to Abiata, the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me either the effort. And Abiata brought either the effort to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 17 says, And David smote them from the tree, from the tree light, even unto the evening the next day, and there escaped none. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither son nor daughter, neither spoil anything that they had taken to them. David recover all. David recover all. Child of God, it is not yet time to complain. Complain will not solve the issue. Sharing the problem will not solve the issue. Tears will not solve the problem. The Bible said before they returned to Ziglag, the Amalekites have invaded their city. They have invaded their place. And they burned down the place to ashes. And they took hold on their sons, their daughters, and their wives. And when the men came back to say that their children were taken away, their wives were taken away, their properties were taken away, Bible said they wept till they have no strength to weep. Ha! They wept till they have no strength to weep. 
but something changed the situation. Mm. Something had changed the situation when all of them were weeping, when everybody had lost hope, when everybody had lost interest. Uh, there was some so somebody among them who was endowed by the spirit of God, who knoweth the ways of the Lord and how. Who manipulate things on their favor? He stood and the Bible said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Makalabarus Lerusi Katabaha. Are you cast down? I am telling you to rise up. Are you cast down? Are you weeping over something? Are you crying over that marriage that has crossed? Are you crying over that job that was taken away from you? Or the interview that have, you have failed? My, my daughter, my son, child of God, rise to your feet because murmuring, complaint, weeping will not solve the problem. When the able men, the soldiers, those who went to war and fought war, those who went and fought and won victory, they came back home and realized that their homes were invaded. Their houses were invaded. Their children were taken into captive. Their children were taken away. Their sons, their daughters, and their wives. And the able men, men of valor, men of strength, men who are masters, who are masters, expertise in war, they began to weep. They began to weep, Rokataba, and some began to devise means how to stone David to death. They began to put the problem on one man. While meanwhile, they all went to the battle and they returned together. But when they came and their children, their properties, their possessions were taken away, they were putting the blame on one man. They were putting the blame on one man. Child of God, it is too late to complain. This is not a time to complain. This is a time to face the challenge, to face the confidence that the future with all boldness and confidence and tell the enemy, you can't play with me, you can't mess up with me. I am a destined child of God. I don't know what people may be saying about you. I don't know what people may be They can write you off. But since it is not God that reads you off, there is a hope. They can read you off. Minister Nelly, I also, may the Lord keep you, preserve you. They can read you off. Hallelujah. They can read you off. They can say things about you. But thank God that it is not God who is reading you off, has written you off. They can give up on you. But thank God that it is not God who has given up on you. Have you not heard? In the book of Isaiah 40, haven't you heard? Will you not be told that the creator of the end of the earth, he fainted not, neither is he willing. He gives strength to the weaklings. He gives strength to the weaklings. Ah, Bible let me understand. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemy. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. For if I fall, I shall rise again. If I sit in darkness, the Lord is my light. He said, there is a hope for a tree. There is a hope for a tree. That even if it is cut down, hey, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> he said, so far as the root is still under the soil, so far as the root is still in the soil, it's just a matter of time. The scent of water shall get to it, and it shall spring forth again. Hallelujah. The strength of water, the scent of water shall get to it one day, and it shall spring forth again. And the current spring huh, shall be greater than the former. He said, the righteous shall fall seven times. You are complaining. Why did I fall? Why did I lose that opportunity? Why did this man give up, give up on me? Why is disappointment every year and there? 
child of God, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. It is not yet over and it's going to be over. So far as Jesus is concerned, rise up to your feet and face the challenges. Command your song and they will obey. Command your song and they will obey. Command the enemy and he will give up. Enemy, Satan we are dealing with. It's not as mighty as we think. Satan is a compromiser. He will force you to compromise your faith. He will force you to compromise your self-ability and self-power. But child of God, if you fail not to compromise, if you fail to compromise with him, he has no other choice than to compromise. Uh -huh. He has no other choice than to compromise. All that Goliath was doing with the children of Israel is just to put fear in them, to intimidate them, to suppress them, to cause them havoc. But when a man of vision, a man who understood the technicalities and the legalities of God and his oppression, when he stepped the ground, he changed the course of events. The Goliath that the whole army were afraid of, a man with divine insight, divine capacity and capability, faced Goliath face to face and said to him, Goliath, I will be specific to you how I am going to kill you. I am not just here to entertain you. Neither am I here to entertain your filthy ways. Goliath today, your head will be given to me. I will slow your head and your body. I will throw the cutters. So when he threw the stone, when he cut the stone, it was the head as the stone hit it. Because that was where he asked God to, 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 to give him. Hallelujah, somebody. When the old men, they were crying, they lost hope. And the able men, the men of Philip, army generals, when they all lost hope and they don't know what to do, those who just returned from fighting war, those who just returned from war, they didn't just went, return from war, they also won victory. But before they came back, somebody has invaded. Another mighty man has invaded their home and took their possessions away. And look at this. Is it not a shame? Is it not a shame that able men that should, should stand to their feet, they were crying. They were crying. They were broken. They were lamenting. And the Bible says, a man full of the Holy Ghost, by the name David stood and said, and he called Abiata the priest. He said, Abiata, bring me the effort. Right now I lost it. I'm losing it. I don't know what to do again. I, my, my strength is failing me gradually. My mind is failing me gradually. My intent are failing me gradually. It's like everybody is giving up on me. But I know somebody who cannot give up on me. His name is Jesus. His name is El Elyon and Adonai. He said, bring me the effort. The instrument of requirement. The instrument to, re to inquire. And when they brought the effort to him, he said, inquire of the Lord. These people that came and invaded my city, should I pursue them? Should I overtake? And the Lord said, David, don't just pursue. You will pursue them. You will overtake them. Surely without fail, you shall recover all. Child of God, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. Hmm. It is not my word. It is the word of the Lord. He said to his servant, Today David is no longer there. Put your name there. And that I shall recover all. That I shall recover all. That is the word of the Lord. To David that day, when David was downcasted, when David lost hope, when David was, was shaken, when David had no strength again, he inquired of the Lord. He said, shall I pursue these people? Shall I overtake them? 
and the Lord said, Pursue, overtake, and with that for you shall recover all. And verse 17, that was said, And David pursued them, he overtook them, and he recovered all. And nothing was missing out of what they have taken away from them. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ that this year is a month of birth. This nine month is a month of birth. I don't know what the heaven has pregnant with for you. I don't know what the heavens has hold in store for you. But I prophesy in the name of Jesus, whatever thing, whatever blessing, whatever opportunity, whatever breakthrough, whatever success, whatever testimony, whatever miracle, heaven has been pregnant with for you. It shall be birthed this month. I say it shall be birthed this month. I say it shall be birthed this month. Your miracles shall be birthed this month. Your success shall be birthed this month. That answer you are looking for, that testimony you are craving for, it shall be given birth to. Hallelujah. Recover all. Recover all. Recover all. Madam Asio, my Nuti Fafa. Nuti Fafa. God bless you. God bless you. In fact, I love your, 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 your motivational words. In fact, God will increase you. Mary Noble. Hallelujah. He said, pursue. He said, surely you shall overtake without fail. I don't know where you are failing in life. I don't know where you are failing in life. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something, child of God. Finding yourself in the situation is not enough to come out of the situation. Can I take it again? Finding yourself in that situation is not enough to come out of the situation. But knowing what to do is the answer. It's what brings the answer. Who do you depend on? On whose arm are you leaning? Hallelujah, somebody. Well, the, what brings the difference was that? When all men were crying and they were weeping, and all that they could do is to blame somebody for their misfortune, is to blame David for their failure or their disadvantage. All that they could do is to blame somebody. But what brings the change and the turnaround was that David did not succumb to their, to their, to their, their demands. And they are dealing and doings. But while they were crying, David turned to go. Kukre ki meto olere. Mede ma bia o sebere. E mi wu o tronado. A ba yile jure. E me yo o lebe ne senaida. A me beto elo alo ma wa. E la me bibla na me sen kon me mede. This situation in which you find yourself, whom are you leaning on? On whom do you lean? And the time was your Knowing what to do. When the people were crying, David said to God. He called up the other and said, bring me the effort. And David said, God, this is the situation I found myself. What must I do? What is the way out? This, this issue was linked up. It was a similar issue that the children of Israel had in the wilderness. When they encountered the Red Sea, they began to murmur. They began to say things. They murmur against God. And they murmur against the man of God. But Bible said, and Moses turned to God. He said, look at your people. He said, look at them. He said, see what they are saying. Because they are seeing the Red Sea. Tell of God, the Red Sea is not the issue. But what to do is the issue. You may, you may be confronting Red Seas. You may come across Red Sea in your journey. But don't give attention to the Red Sea. But give attention to the one that is capable to pass it. <laughs> Don't succumb to the Red Sea. 
but seek for the one who has trained, who knows the deep and the measurement of the Red Sea, who knows the foundation of the Red Sea, who knows where there is a way through the Red Sea. Turn to that man, and you, you will be amazed. Hallelujah. The problem is not issue. When you elevate your problem above God, then you are limiting God to that problem, and God cannot do anything. Hallelujah, somebody. He said, pursue. David came to God. And David required. He inquired from the Lord. He said, must I pursue? Should I overtake? And the Lord gave him his approval. He said, my son David, pursue. This is a man I love. This is a man I want. A man that will not give up on situation. Will not give up because there are storms. There is a situation. A man that could stand to his feet and seek for what to do. God will give you strength. That sickness will not kill you. As you know today, that there was a man in the Bible called the blind Bartimio. He was there for a quite long. But the day he, called, he encountered God, Jesus, that day, restoration came. I don't know what you are battling with. I don't know what is fighting you. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus. That after this day, after today's broadcast, that thing will give way. That strong one will give way. In Jesus' mighty name. We are going to pray. It is time for prayer. Our time is almost up. Hallelujah. We are going to pray a prayer. And we shall continue this broadcast next week. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Read from verse 2 to verse 3. I will go before thee, and then the crooked place is straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut asunder the bath of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Apostle Gabriel and Kujabwe, Apostle, thank you, sir. You are welcome. God bless you for watching. Please share. You. Hallelujah. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And hidden riches of the secret places, the treasures of darkness. The Lord says something. He said, I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in the secret places, child of God. There are hidden riches in the in, in a secret place that we must lay our hand on. Who can be there? I don't know. How it got there, I don't know. But what I know is that Bible is saying, I will give thee, it said, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Ah, darkness is holding something that belongs to you. Darkness. And anytime you hear darkness, it's talking about the dark world. You are going to pray. Whatever the dark world has taken forcefully from me. Today, as I open my mouth and I pray, I recover it by fire by force. Open, begin to pray. Kabaro seke telebi. Rekete bring in kopalagada. Arata kabrando kapa. As you are praying, I'm praying for you. As you are praying, I'm praying for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will give thee the treasures of darkness. And I will uh, and the hidden riches of secret places. In the name of Jesus. Every treasure in darkness. I don't know who has placed it there. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be your best friend. It could even be your husband or your wife. I don't care and I don't want to know. But whatever it is, they have hidden in that darkness. Whatever treasure they have given in that darkness, God is restoring it back to you. God is restoring it back to you by the supreme power of the Holy Spirit. Eric, I pray God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Share the light broadcast. God will reward you. Francis Godson, God bless you. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In Jesus' name, let's say the last prayer. The last prayer. 
he said, and hidden riches of secret places. Hidden riches of secret places. That is why no wonder there are secret societies, there are secret courts. You are going to pray a prayer. Every secret places holding my riches. Every secret room, every secret altar, every secret coven holding my riches by the raising of the power of the Holy Ghost and the supreme blood of the soul Hamashiach. As I lift up my voice and I pray, I recover all. 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 You are recovering it. 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 Every dark places. Every dark places. Holding your blessing. Holding your riches. Recover it. 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 In the name of Jesus. If you have ever lost anything dear and precious to you, if I be a man of God, next week, Sunday by this time, you shall share a testimony. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have lost, between now to next week, any man holding it, any woman holding it, I take it from them. I give it back to you now. In the name of Jesus, if you believe, type Amen. I take it from them. I give it back to you now. Receive your losses. Receive your losses. Restoration, restoration. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Every secret altar manipulating your destiny, manipulating your career, manipulating your testimony. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I remain the prophet of God. Prophet John Bright Shapman. You are watching me live from Pando. I am the senior pastor and the founder of Ark of Covenant Miracle Ministry. We are located here right at Pando. Off Kudra Road. We are found, we are located at the gravel pit. You fellowship with us every Sunday and every Wednesday. Sunday, 7 o'clock sharp. I'll be with you again. We will continue this same topic. God bless you. He keep you. And may you be a testimony giver. You will share your testimony. God bless you. Share the live broadcast. God keep you. Shalom. Amen.